Welcome to Put Your Block Horror Podcast, where we exhume horror movies from the past and cut into what makes them so delectable. I'm Kane. Uh, I'm JD. I'm Joe. And I don't matter. You do matter. And tonight, we have a special guest. It's not a special guest anymore, all right? No, he's special. <laughs> I mean, he is special, and he is a guest. Put those together. We do love him. He is our beautiful baby boy. <laughs> yeah. Our so- big... I'm starting Dumb to think boy. that you guys keep me around because you think I'm weird. All right, that's enough. All right. You're like a puppy. <laughs> Who are you? And what are you doing here? Speak! Yes, Daddy. I'm Chris. I'm here to fuse with JD, <laughs> and we're going to talk about ghoulies. And become a dreadful amalgamation of horror knowledge. Okay, all right. Well, let's see, JD, when we fuse and like merge no, no, to become stop, one organism, <laughs> do we want to do it butt first or face first? Butt to butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dal, finish up. We got shit to do. Oh, I'm going to regret this. <laughs> Spit it, Kane. Today we're throwing the 1985 gloopy puppet masterpiece, Ghoul, <laughs> onto the slab and masterpiece. carving up our favorite portions to force to word. you are unwitting victims can you think of another gloopy puppet movie that you would refer to as a masterpiece gremlins gremlins was the balls when it came out <laughs> you know what fuck you all right this is a <laughs> gloopy puppet masterpiece and you could get bent if you don't like that it's got gloop on gloop on gloop if you enjoy the taste of these feasts of fright then honestly there's probably something terribly wrong with you. they make pills for it but you should consider following us in all of the places that podcasts live. Yeah. Check post us out a review. on Instagram. It's very active. Give us a comment. Look at our Instagram. Check out our MySpace page. Yeah, we would love to hear your feedback. You can also check out our website, we give you brainworms.com. And that's where the links to our Patreon and our funky fresh Discord server, yeah. as well as other projects we may be procrastinating working it's on. true. And that server is dressed to impressed and ready to party. It really is. Yeah, if you get into that Discord, you can interact with some of us occasionally. It's mostly me and Chris. Yeah. And I can interact sometimes. Joe sometimes. But yeah. David, don't, don't expect to hear from him or from JD. Nope. David, because he's got other important shit to do. And right. JD, because he cannot navigate to it. He's afraid of it. I can't. I just, it's not part of me. He's not afraid of it. He just can't do it. Remember, he tried to do it, and there was a Kachka that thought he was a robot. Oh, I do remember that. I sat there for like an <laughs> hour, and this thing was like, no, fuck you. Did you say ghoulies yet? No, JD. I kept that secret from... The people when I said the 1985 gloopy puppet masterpiece Ghoulies. It's like an in that Shyamalan twist. <laughs> I love that laugh so much. Uh, okay. But uh, anyway, to Ghoulies, the point of tonight. Sven Ghoulie? Has he done a movie, JD? No, he hasn't actually been in a movie, but he's been a classic horror film host for decades. Right. And he's Chicago lore, in my opinion. In fact, I have his likeness tattooed on my own flesh. Instead of talking about ghoulies, can we just have JD tell us Sven Ghoulie stories all night? I could definitely do that. Instead of doing that, can we just have JD tattoo his flesh on us? All right, so this is... It's not physically painful yet, but it's close. <laughs> Yeah, Kane can't handle the combined power of Chris and JD. <laughs> when we go ass to ass, and that's how we Voltron together. <laughs> you, know, you know, I just, I have a system, all right? And I need that system to be followed in Butcher Block, even if it's going to be a chaotic mess. Right. It needs to be my chaotic mess. Yeah, you need that structure, otherwise your brain will shut down. Yeah, so. And you invited me? Like, I are, did. Are you crazy? A little. I got a system for you to follow. I got a system for you to get down with. What is Ghoulies. it, JD? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What's the system, JD? I'm going to tell you. Ghoulies, at one point, had a, a working title of Beasties. And I'm so glad they went with Ghoulies. Me too. Yeah, Ghoulies is better. I mean, the Beasties is straight up rad for the Beastie Boys. The Ghoulies, however, so grateful. I enjoyed this film. Hell of a bunch. We'll talk about how much you enjoyed it afterwards, JD. Yes, master. <laughs> Kane's just <laughs> desperately trying to regain the wheel. You're like Dick in this movie. He's like... Before we just drive the no, show off no. the cliff. You could call me Dick. Okay. All right. Well, why don't I call you talking about the movie Ghoulies? No, JD is totally right. We are Kane's Ghoulies. Oh.
I don't know, Chris. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Hey, why don't we go down the road where you tell me about the goddamn movie we watched? <laughs> sure, maybe. sure. Don't go chasing waterfalls. It was released. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, don't just stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Jakey. <laughs> uh, anyway. <fucking> swear. <laughs> Ghoulies was released January 18th of 1985 with a runtime of 81 minutes. Ghoulies had a surprisingly large budget for 1985, $5.6 million. It all went to that Trident. <laughs> yeah. The Trident that was purchased from Walgreens. I think I got Joe with that one. On the night of October 30th, yeah. 1984. Okay. That fateful night. They found the Trident oh, and they decided to design a movie around it. Um, anyway, that's a different podcast that I don't want to be on. So let's just, let's, stay, <laughs> let's not, let's stay in our they lane. They pulled the trident from a styrofoam stone. Oh my God. Why did I do this? Yeah. It's like ghoulie caliber. Oh, this is what tapeworms is going to be like. You think so? <laughs> I do. <laughs> hey, 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 hoy, yeah. hey, hey, everybody take yeah. a breath. No, no, no. Take a I'm, breath. I'm gonna... Take a breath. Take a breath. I don't okay. need to calm down. I need, I need hey, to hey, calm hey, up. Sh- take a breath. Take a breath. <gasps> All right. JD. Yeah. Continue telling us this information. You got it, babe. Chris, you hold that breath, buddy. You just hold <laughs> on to it. Ghoulies was directed by Luca Berkovici. It was almost directed by Charles Band, but there was a little weird wiggly stuff that happened, and then it ended up being directed by Luca. Luca was born February 22nd, 1957 in New York. A lot of Charles Band collaborators were involved with this movie. Absolutely. Like his guys were all through the cast and crew. Well, the crew. Very true. Richard Band. Mm-hmm. Charles' brother, score maker extraordinaire. Uh, right. Mac Alberg, the cinematographer, was also a frequent Charles Band collaborator. Very true. Anyway, Luca, known for filmmaking, acting, directing, writing, and producing, Luca's father was uh, Eric Berkovici. And he was also a pretty well-known, respected television film producer of his era, also a screenwriter. And even Eric's father, Luca's grandfather, Leonardo, well-respected screenwriter, producer, and director. So three generations of filmmakers here with quite a lineage. I liked him in Revenant. Who was in Revenant? Leonardo. Uh, no, that's DiCaprio. <laughs> this is Berkovici. But uh, nice try. Wait. There's not one name for one person? Oh, God. Uh, God, I wish a bear would maul me right now. (laughs) It's funny because I actually wish a bear would maul Chris right now. (laughs) See, I don't wish death upon anyone. I I don't want him to die. No. (laughs) I said maul. I didn't say eat. I didn't say consume. I just want him to get mauled. Fair enough. I I really don't think a bear is going to know how to apply Darth Maul makeup. But an... I can edit him out, by the way. (laughs) All right. I gave you space for your retort. I regret it now. Lucas started his career on his father's project titled Shogun, which came out in 1980. The miniseries got 14 Emmy Nom Noms. Nom Nom Nom. And put Luca on the board. It was a TV miniseries, if I didn't mention that already. I've I've, I've got a couple beers going on in my bloodstream and... uh, I'm feeling all right. Dude, your bloodstream parties? Yeah, it does. That's metal. I'm metal. (laughs) Luca made his directorial debut with Ghoulies, which he also co-wrote. And I would say, for one's directorial debut, fuck yeah. Yeah, better than Puppet Master. It's true. Oh, poof. I mean, this thing just straight shit on Puppet Master, because there was like eight seconds of puppets in Puppet Master. There were more puppets (laughs) in Ghoulies than Puppet Master. And still... Not enough to my liking. Yeah, still I, less I, puppet saturation than I'd have liked. But I think by the time they approached the sequel, they had doubled down, possibly tripled down on mm-hmm. the amount of ghoulies. Well, I mean, by the end of the movie, there was triple the amount of ghoulies. I still don't feel like that was a sufficient amount of ghoulies for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. personally. I require many ghoulies. As a director, Luca excelled in the subgenre of horror comedy. Beginning with Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2, Ghoulies 2 popped out in 1988, and then something called Rockula in 1990. Ghoulies go to college. I am clamoring for that shit. Yeah, I don't, after this, I don't, I don't know. Well, I'd say stop yourself right there. Ghoulies go to college came out in 1991. Another horror comedy titled The Granny in 1995. I don't like that. 
Well, I loved my granny, so I would give this a shot. Luca was involved with a few other horror titles, but as an actor. So I'll bypass all that and cut to the producer of Ghoulies, Charles Band. And so here's the thing. I've talked about Charles Band beyond recognition. Yeah, we've talked about Charles Band quite a bit. We've also talked about the, uh, Full Moon Entertainment. Yeah. Streaming service. Yeah, who didn't give us any kind of a sponsorship deal or send us free merch. Right. Let them know I need a t-shirt. Yeah, we asked them very nicely to send us merchandise because we talked about them on our show. We did. Yeah. And that's fine. It's almost like we don't matter or something. We might not. Like that we barely exist. You know, it's almost. But to be fair, nothing fucking matters. We have 118 YouTube followers, Kane. Okay. Which means what? Very little in the grand scheme. Okay. That's fine. Well, we appreciate them. Yeah. So let me get back to Ghoulies here. The producer of Ghoulies would be Jeffrey Levy, the producer that I'm going to discuss. Because like I said, we've ran Charles Band over backwards, forward, sideways. Oh, yeah? Phrasing. Jeffrey Levy, born May 21st, 1958, also of New York. Also a man of many hats and talents, working throughout his career as a writer, director, and producer. Not much in the way of horror other than Ghoulies, unfortunately, in 1985, and Rockula in 1990. I hate Rockula. You do? Mm hmm Terrible movie. Yep. I hate it. Okay. I've never seen that movie, and uh, I will reserve my judgment for after such events. Jeffrey Levy did do some writing on the show Sliders, though. Which was a fun as hell show in the 90s. The show. So uh, are you bitches ready for me to talk about the plot of Ghoulies? Only if you cut it at the point where aliens show up. All right. Anything you want, you got it. Anything you want. It. That's the way you need it. Anyway, plot of Ghoulies. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Kane? I didn't hear Kane chime in. Yeah. I think Kane has just shut down because he's tired of our shit. He hates it. Kane, do you hate it? We're doing the structure, Kane. Yeah, just... Oh, all right, never mind. Plot. <laughs> Let's talk about dude, the plot. Dude, if you spell dog backwards, it spells dad. I actually spells God. Anyway, go ahead, um, <laughs> plot of ghoulies. Kane, do you just want to let them go and then you and I can <laughs> hey, go and do you whatever? Guys, you guys thought this was a good <laughs> no, idea. No. So, like, there's this little ceremony held by a satanic cult Aiming to sacrifice a bambino, a baby. Little baby. Little baby. Little baby. My baby. Little baby. This little baby got some bling bling from his mama, from his little mama, in the form of a, of a talisman, a protective talisman that shocks the fucking nuts <laughs> off satanic cult leaders. Not literally. It was Malcolm Graves, his father. I, don't, I do think you Fuck need, Malcolm. Yeah, need to clear that up. Yeah. Playing by Michael Desberries. Good job. Mm -hmm. With his fucking wonky contact lenses. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, dude, how, how could pupils be so prey? <laughs> and they did not figure it out you know? throughout the entire filming process. <laughs> it took them 80 minutes before the fucking pupils were like symmetrical. It's like they were drying them on with a so, Sharpie marker. So that's, I guess, 80s horror in a nutshell. Yeah. And the lady that gave him the amulet was his mother, and that was played by Victoria Catlin. Right yeah, that's it all checks out. Um... Anyway. Actually, I know who the baby was, too. Okay. I don't know if that matters to you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, go ahead. Let's hear the baby's name. Did the baby go on to have an acting career? No, but it's Jamie Bronow. Tell me that's not an unfortunate it name. It is, yeah. <laughs> hey, Bronow, give me some... <laughs> I think you're a bro now. There doesn't seem Ugh. to be any other bros around. All right. Anyway, this protective talisman, um, like I said... It disagrees it with it did. satanic cult leader Malcolm. Baby mama gets sacrificed. I prefer devil worship cult leader. All right. Also, she doesn't just get sacrificed. He makes her grow a third boob so hard that it kills her. She gets nut sacrificed. I mean, her flesh bulges out. and I'm pretty sure he rips her heart out, but it was yeah. so violent and so gory that even the ghoulies could not They don't really watch show it. it. It's almost as if he were going to yeah. summons her heart through her chest cavity mm -hmm. and tissues and all that, the bones. Yeah. It was pretty sick. That scene fucked oh, me yeah, up. Oh, yeah. It was like, was oh, no, oh, don't yeah. show it. Oh, and then man, they didn't that show scene, it. Yeah. Even the ghoulies turned away, and like you like, said. Oh. It was phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, the leader. Ends up kicking the bucket, and uh, that pretty much breaks up the band, the satanic cult, for now. Actually, 
actually... God, I'm fucking mansplaining. That's so gross. Don't get over your skis. Well, actually. Uh, well, actually. God, it's so douchey. You're over your skis right now. Well, I'm just saying, no, you you didn't mention Jack Nance. What about him? He was the fucking guy that saves the baby. Jack right. Nance. Wolfgang. The caretaker. Okay. Also frequent collaborator with David Lynch. Yeah, he was a racer head in a racer head. Yeah, and he was in Twin Peaks. And I hate david lynch movies so none of that matters to me i know you need to just stop <laughs> collaborate and listen it's me for now anyway okay we'll keep going emphasis on for now that the band's broken up fast forward about a quarter of a century and that little baby my baby a man named jeffrey well i mean if you go by the actor's age it was more like 36 years yeah that guy was like 35 <laughs> truth Anyway, he inherits his dead father's estate and finds some of the satanic cult stuff in the property. And so naturally, what do you do? You throw a party. Mm -hmm. As you do. That's Peter Leopas. Yep. Who played Jonathan Graves. Knight of the Leopas. And he was 36, but hanging out with like 20 year olds right. because yeah. Hollywood doesn't understand how anything works. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's always at least one guy who's way old to be at the age sure. group party they're at. Yes, I, that does happen to all the parties I go to. Yeah, yeah, Chris. What was the most recent party you went to? Uh, it was the uh, spring solstice party that I went to. Oh, yeah, nice. D uh, uh, David turned me on to it. It was cool at first, but when people started dressing up as deer and worshiping mushrooms, I, I got out of there. Good call. That sounds awesome. Good call. Yeah. Are you lying, Chris? Is that what just happened? Did you he just lie lying. to us? Yeah. Hold on. Oh. I, don't I don't need you to speak for him, all right? Our baby not... boy can talk for himself, okay? <laughs> Chris, were you just lying to us, buddy? Yeah. Okay. This is getting weird. We're talking about the plot of <laughs> Ghoulies. <laughs> Sorry. We're your dads now, Chris. <laughs> so, as so I was saying, <laughs> can I handle three daddies at once? God damn it. Well, let's approach this in the spirit of being concise for a change. <laughs> Wait, what? So naturally, <laughs> okay, they. I'll leave. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, I'm not stopping. They throw a party with all their friends in the spirit of the satanic cult, they do some shit. In this uh, new space, they perform some rituals on their own. Yeah. That doesn't do much. Was it rituals or just the one? And it's really just the one guy. Like, come on, guys, let's worship the devil for a minute. Yeah, they all get in a circle. This is very stupid. This podcast or no, the movie? No, 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 no. So anyway, they wake up the ghoulies with this ritual. And he decides to, at some point, tell his girlfriend that he's about to drop out of school and renovate his inheritance, uh, the estate. Which seems reasonable. Remember, kids, don't be a fool, stay in school. And may all of your student loans be forgivable. Or, now I'm just putting this out there, or if you inherit a castle-like structure. Mm -hmm. Sell it. Sell it. Yeah. And then just... And then live wherever the fuck you want. Live wherever you want, yeah. Sell it to Nicolas Cage. Well, right now the market's popping off, so I guess that makes sense. But anyway, more cleaning. Cleaning. Still cleaning. They should have done a cleaning montage. That's true. And they kind of did. It was like a Rocky training sequence, but... Anyway, yeah. except for the part where he was throwing junk down the stairwell. I didn't get that. Just kicking it down the stairs. Or when he opened up the closet. Not much and time passes him. before the couple <laughs> um, decide on performing another satanic <laughs> ritual. Remember, kids, between... I feel like you're glossing over that. Would you stop for a moment? And then... <laughs> remember, kids, JD, uh, between chores, <laughs> you can pass your time with satanic rituals. So, like, if you're not into sports or video games, there's always Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, Jonathan starts acting real spooky. And real douchey. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick, too. Like, yeah, not a lot of time passes. Yeah, like, it makes me think that he was, like, a high-risk sure. Satanist, you know? Or devil worshiper. Yeah. So, as a devil worshiper, anyway, his behaviors begin to concern his girlfriend. And now he's, like, fasting and performing, like, regular rituals, that sort of thing. And dude becomes a creepy, ghouly master in a sense. Well, before he does that, he goes to the Halloween store and buys a spooky trident. Well, I think that was in the basement <laughs> no, with that the was already other in the basement. spooky paraphernalia. Anyway, his love interest decides to split. Lisa Pelican played Rebecca. Yeah, and she was awesome. She was the most sensible person in this entire film. And, and once she uh, left his life, things went downhill. 
It was bad. Like I said, she was the only positive influence that he had to that point. We meet some ancient dwarves summoned by Jonathan. Greedy Gut and Grizzle, played by Tamara de Treu and Peter Rish. Thanks. They were the best thing in the movie. The ghoulies. They were up there. The dwarves are hella evil, and they gaslight him into putting himself and about seven friends in danger by way of a uh, power-seeking ritual. Can we take just a moment and talk about Dick? Excuse me? Oh, wait. The character Dick. The, oh, oh, uh, sure, sure. No, that's fine. I mean, fine. we can talk about that too, Joe, but... It, it needs to be said, though, that the dwarves had metal scalps specifically for the use of using them as projectile weapons. I don't think that's true. We saw it in the movie. I mean, they stayed on their heads. If 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 at one point those metal no, helmets... he was talking about using the little people as projectiles. Yeah, Ooh, that's... I don't know if that's what you do. That's not what happened. The little people actually used the ghoulies as projectile weapons. They did throw the ghoulies you, like yeah. little hand grenades. Yeah, there was a ghoulie yeah. toss. But but aside from talking about uh, Dick, who was played funny enough by Keith Joe Dick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all of the friends were like bizarre characters. Yeah. You mean caricatures. Caricatures. Man, that guy's whole name is just first name. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Joe Dick. Yeah. He was voted yeah. most likely to be a serial killer in the high school yearbook. Nice. 1970. <laughs> or a presidential assassin. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. that too. Yeah. But yeah. So one of the friends that's Donna, that is Rebecca's friend, yeah. that was actually played by Mariska Hargitay. Mm -hmm. And she is a lead role, in, has a lead role in uh, SVU. Nice. nice. Then the other friends were Rachel, Ross, and Joey and Phoebe. <laughs> no, no, that's friends. Courtney Cox, right? Yeah, that's what I said, but friends. Hmm. Matt LeBlanc. No, no, none of those were in this movie. Guys. That show no. sucks fucking balls, and so many people like it. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, friends sucked. It was so overrated. Stupid. The friends were made up of, like, the hot friend, which was Robin uh -huh. with all the leather. That was <laughs> Shireen Kathleen. And then you had David Dayan. And Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson and from they Kids were in the, the Hall. Stoner One and Stoner Two. His grandfather invented a machine gun that took a lot of gangsters out at one point. <laughs> <laughs> And then my what the fuck moment came from the introduction of Ralph Seymour, who played Mark Toad yeah. Boy. There was uh, some conversation happening between him and Dick, and it was mm -hmm. just unsettling. And that fucking joint. Yeah. It just looked like garlic skin. Ugh. Like a, a meth head or something. It was just made no sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely looked like a garlic skin. Right. It looked like it was rolled by someone who's never smoked weed before. That doesn't have index fingers in the back of an all-terrain vehicle yeah. going over like, that's, like yeah. hills. Yeah. No, I think that's it. It was rolled by someone who's never rolled a joint before. <laughs> Who had only seen joints in other movies. He's like, here you go, yes, exactly. the reefer's cigarette. <laughs> I made your jazz cigarette. <laughs> jazz. <laughs> your left-handed cigarette. It's very important cigarette. that this is explained yeah. just as it is, okay? So... Yeah. This is exactly what happens in the movie. Stoner One, the guy who's always wearing sunglasses, that's Mike, is actually a ancient Mesopotamian god of partying. What? And we know this because there's a point where he dances oh, yeah. and drugs come out of his pants. Yeah, it's just piles of drugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The just drugs sprinkling just the fall floor. out of his cargo shorts. Quaaludes and French fries. Yeah, so like <laughs> that sounds like a nineties. Wherever album. he dances, like you know, quaaludes and french fries follow, yeah. you know, it's very Wait, wait, where there were french fries? It looked like french fries. I, yeah, in in hindsight, I believe them to be cigarettes. Marijuana cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just hand-rolled tobaccos, but they were probably yeah. marijuana cigarettes. Something uh, psychoactive. Yeah. It's funny, who rolled those? Because he didn't. <laughs> they <Yeah>. looked nice. <laughs> they did. That was the prop guy right. actually did his job that day. Yeah. It's like someone rolled those and put them in his pants. <laughs> they had one prop guy that Knew what drugs were in another prop guy. This well, yeah, back to the plot of right. Ghoulies. Uh, Rebecca tries her ass off to persuade Jonathan to to quit the shit and come out of the house. Stop being a butthole. Yeah, stop being a butthole. You know, <laughs> it wasn't effective. Though. It no. was not effective because you know at this point Jonathan's eyeballs are already glowing lime green and well, sort of. We already know what how fucked you are once your eyeballs glow lime green, right? Uh, yeah. Apparently, when you worship Satan, you get Mountain Dew vision. <laughs> oh, awesome. my God. Is that like snake vision? 
<laughs> Only more extreme. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the Viagra vision of uh, what's that film again from season oh, one? Uh, I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Spasms. Such a bad. Anyway, I will say this much. The dwarves did Jonathan dirty. They played him like a fiddle. Mm, like a damn fiddle. But then they changed their mind. They did change their mind, but there was this, you know, cunning ruse to bring back Malcolm, which was, you know, sort of like this dark figure who he was just a had a plot to unleash hell on earth, I suppose. I guess. Nobody really like nobody's motivations were terribly clear i'm projecting they okay. just wanted power like aside from the the kind of greaser looking guy that just wanted to fuck yeah everyone i didn't know what anyone in this movie wanted he didn't have any loyalty to anyone he was going to fuck no he just wanted to bone down wherever he could get it yep. this movie emphasized something that i really enjoyed about the 80s which was the sort of renaissance to the 50s of like pompadour hairdos yeah yeah they came back hard in the 80s. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, if you look at a lot of 80s films like Back to the Future, things like that, you'll see a sort of like a 1950s. I just want to kind of throw this out there just so you know. Sure. A good portion of Back to the Future actually takes place in, in the 50s. 1950s. I get it. <laughs> no, it's understandable. But even their 1980s yeah. selves, like, well, were no, I very... think it was like a hangover from the 70s kind of love affair with the 50s. Right. Which might have been a hangover from the 60s kind of love affair with the 50s. What's up with the 50s? Like, Happy Days in Greece were the 70s, weren't they? Sunday, 60s Monday, and 70s, happy I think. Days. What we're trying to tell you is that humanity is just one continued hangover from the very beginning. Yeah, pop culture just constantly shits into its own mouth and then <laughs> or time is a flat circle yeah so i suppose the dwarves weren't all bad because they informed jonathan of the I keep threats. thinking about the punk band the dwarves yeah then the character wolfgang shows up and does battle with malcolm and the house begins to implode there are a few stages that you're breezing past yeah that's kind of what i do though so as the house <laughs> yeah. implodes in the wake of its collapse, Malcolm finally gets his ass whooped by Wolfgang. With eye lightning. Yeah, like forest lightning from the eyeballs. That's true. They they have this phenomenal Jedi-esque eye lightning battle. It was very Jedi-esque. It was like color-coded eye lightning. It's like, oh, your eye lightning is bad. Mine's good. Take that. Although weren't they all disciples of the Dark Lord? Of the devil. Yes. Yes. So like really good and evil became kind of just abstract. Yeah. Yeah. When you take into consideration that Malcolm could, the powers that he displayed were very different from the powers that Jonathan displayed. Aside from being able to be resurrected, he was also able to change shape. Mm -hmm. That's true. And elongate his tongue. Yeah, oh. because when all the friends get invited back to the house, the real reason they're being invited back is to raise Malcolm. Right. And then they essentially become sacrifices right. to continue his power. Mm -hmm. Right. Which That's was before the fight with Wolfgang. Part so there's of like the this whole cunning plot sequence. of the dwarves and Malcolm to trick everyone and you know i like that like the season that we start telling people here's the movie that we're gonna watch next week so you can follow along we just get more esoteric and eldritch <laughs> well, no i think it's funny so i i kind of anticipated this right so uh -huh. when we first started doing butcher block i would ask jd for a plot synopsis and then uh -huh. give us a brief overview kane right? would take a fierce dump <laughs> right on my yeah. chest on. He would tell us the whole movie, and I would have to interrupt him and be like, no, no, we're just doing a synopsis. Just brief overview, and then we'll move on to the information. So when we did <laughs> started this season, I was like, JD. Just be JD. Your wish has been granted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just be you. Do you. Tell us the whole thing. Uh-huh. And here and I he go. he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're being a fool right now. I've been beyond informative. I think you're just leaving things out and, and it just burns Kane's guts. But not really. Not really. It's not. If I give every single detail, then you have nothing to discuss. So I'm leaving space for y'all gentlemen to interject. To jump in. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a nice setup. Anyway, this so. This is a stupid podcast. Sure. Anyway. Is this what talking to me is like? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So let me military crawl my way back to this plot <laughs> under On the barbed belly, wire of our bullshit over jagged rocks 
the barbed wire of our bullshit is probably one of the most <laughs> apt descriptions of what we forced JD through. It's true. This coarse <laughs> terrain has really chafed me, and I am set to get to the end of this plot. So you going to apply some balm. I need bag balm for my nipples. My nipples are so <laughs> fiercely chafed at this point in time from all of the. They utterly chased. <laughs> nice pun. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You've been hanging around me too long. And so basically, though, don't get worried, people. Everyone escapes the cold grasp of death. And they drive off. I blame society for not putting a bomb underneath my chair. What? To end he it. wasn't talking about... Stop it, Ellen Chris. DeGeneres did not leave a bomb under your chair. A bomb or a bomb? <laughs> God for your did. bag device. did ellen degeneres do you a solid and leave you some balm bag or bag balm <laughs> oh my god someone intruded in my house and they left a lifetime supply of lip balm wow it's bird's bees too it's a good stuff okay <laughs> what is anything why is <laughs> nothing matters what? we've we've why? already kane i'm sorry i know uh, so like, like i think it's funny but i have enough insight into your mind that i know how this, how this must feel for you and i'm so sorry <laughs> it's fine it's fine but yeah so they they leave the house jd they leave the and house and they like I everybody said, comes back to life yeah everyone's back to life there is no death everybody it's just they wanted. a bunch of um People in a vehicle driving away as all the little fingers point toward a sequel. Yep. They did. They definitely pointed Big toward a sequel. Big sequel bait at the end. In the form of all of the ghoulies popping up <laughs> in the backseat. I feel like there was a missed opportunity. Uh -huh. And I think JD will probably agree with you with this. That the guy didn't make like a screamy face and then they freeze oh, frame. Oh, freeze frame on the with, ah face. Yeah, yep. that would have been good. Yeah. I'm really upset they didn't do I was hoping for it. You know, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. But I was hoping for it. I'm always here for a uh, freeze face. Yeah. Freeze freeze. That didn't happen. <laughs> now, listeners, if you'll notice, JD did not, did not mention the ghoulies once. And that's because that's exactly how much they have to do with the movie. I mean, he, he mentioned them. But yeah, there was less ghoulie content than I was hoping for. Well, there were more like ancient dwarves and, uh, yeah. you know. The weird, stupid friend group fucking around for half yeah, the Yeah, the warlock, you know. But I mean, <clears throat> we did have an elongated tongue. Yeah. Used to lasso his strangle. The that was dick. Pretty good, yeah. yeah, counterpart's throat. Lasso the dick. His counterpart of battle. Mm -hmm. He uh, strangulated him with some tongue action. I mean, that's where all of the like the the kills happen. Yeah. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Is, all of that happened during that sequence. And then they had this weird, like, come like Malcolm's like, come to me, my children. And they all start like wiggle worming yeah because they were like the stairs murdered by the ghoulies kind of so which ghoulie was in the weird dracula puppet was that a dracula puppet that's what it looked like to me some kind of dracula that was puppet. an isolated ghoulie who was just like yeah we didn't it really was a ever green one yeah and it was bigger yeah it was a big green one it wasn't the green one that was always like coming up out of toilet bowls and bowls of mashed potatoes right was that mashed potatoes or was that a bowl of soup? Oh, it was soup. You're right. The mashed potatoes were during the party at the beginning. No, it wasn't soup. It was just a bowl of cum. It was white, creamy, and thick. Like It, it was just a semen ghoulie. I mean, some soup is also white, creamy, and thick. True. Yeah, true. That's not true at all. Clam chowder. That's cum. Yeah. Cream of mushroom. Sure. Also cum. Cream of chicken. Yeah. Also cum. Cream of potato. Yeah. Also cum. So, wait, I don't want to dissect this, but I'm going to. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, I, feel, I feel obligated at this point. Chris, do you believe that every white substance is a form of jism? <laughs> Mayonnaise. Like Elmer's glue. Horseradish. It's why I don't eat vanilla ice cream. You think it's frozen cum? Even aioli sauce. And also, I think it's really unhealthy that we're showing kids, you know, a, a farmer <laughs> making a cow come from from their four penises <laughs> let's move on <laughs> all right we're gonna give chris a timeout and he's gonna think about what he did all right and we're gonna we're gonna keep you going you can't put him in the quiet room and fuck up the recording i know i can't physically move him to the quiet room which is upsetting mumble you need to fix that we need to be able to put chris in the quiet room without fucking up the whole recording <laughs> but yeah so there's the ritual mm -hmm. 
to uh, obtain what? Ghoulies. Well, another thing is, though, is they already had all the ghoulies. The ghoulies were all out. Right. Why did they, why why did they sacrifice yeah. all of the friends? And then why did Malcolm want to sacrifice his son at the end? Like, Why do you want to sacrifice Jonathan? Well, Malcolm was wanting to return to youth. He was going to suck the, the life out of yeah, his son. Yeah, but to what end? Because, yeah, clearly it was to finish the ritual from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. When they were trying to sacrifice the young Jonathan. Yeah, which Jonathan's mother put the kibosh on. Right, with the lightning pendant. Yeah. Yeah, adorning him with the talisman of protection. But the movie doesn't really explain what the stakes are. Right, yeah. And that's part of 80s movie charm. You know, there's uh, big holes in plots. It felt like an Italian horror movie to me. Yeah. It really did. Like, there were a lot of Italian filmmakers involved. Well, there was at least the director. The cinematographer as well was Italian. Okay. The cinematographer. And yeah. I believe the the writer and the director were the co-writer and director were the same person. Right. All right. So we just can't seem to establish hmm. what uh, they said they want power. Yeah. Right? They, yeah. And we know they that crave it. undead Malcolm, mm -hmm. undead Malcolm is trying to regain his youth. Yeah. Right. But that ritual was started. Aren't we all though? <laughs> no. 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 No, absolutely not. That's why <laughs> that I stretch. ritual was started 30 years before that, Yeah, right? like, they were trying to sacrifice the baby to achieve some other occult end. Right. Yeah, so the film ends with a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. right? And what we're going to do now is is we've, we've covered the plot. Yeah. We've covered the plot holes that J.D. didn't mention during his explanation of the yeah. plot. The fact that the movie doesn't clearly explain its stakes. We've discovered that the movie doesn't have any idea what stakes are there. Yeah. To be fair, though, those are like sinkholes, though. You know, you, you throw sand on them and they just <laughs> go right back down. <laughs> so that's my argument on that. So what we're going to do now mm -hmm. is we're going to talk about special effects. Yeah. JD. I will. Give it those deets. Wait and see. Sweet deets. I love you. The sweet. sweet deets. I got them deets. It's like a Black Sabbath sort of cover. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Yeah. Making reference that's to. That's kind of cool. I, I'm into it. So yeah, the special effects were pretty deep in this flick. Some of my personal favorites. And I'm, I'm going to name a few names and then I'll get into greater depth. I would like to talk about John Carl Buschler, who actually designed the puppets. The mighty Buschler. The mighty Buschler. I'm just picturing Eugene Levy saying Buschler. Bushler. Oh, yeah. Bushler. Bushler. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so John Carl Bushler actually designed the puppets that we all witnessed and loved. Best part of the movie. Fantastic. Also, heavily credited as one of the makeup and special effects artists. Bushler was the bee's knees on the set of this film. But there are some others to mention here, uh, such as Anthony Allen Barlow and Christopher Biggs. A.K.A. Chris Biggs. A.K.A. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Big, I think, is what you're thinking of, right? Yeah, but his name is Big, so I, I couldn't. I had to Biggs. do the work Plural. with what I had. Yeah. I feel you. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Biggs and Wedge and Tilly? Mr. Big Big was a band in like the late 80s, <laughs> early 90s. and Just to be the next to you. Be I just didn't want to do the whole thing. Oh, because we're, yeah. we're going to get flagged again. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> YouTube's going to shut us down. We sing so well that <laughs> we're constantly mistaken of... <laughs> for song samples. <laughs> now, real quick, I just want to point out that it was a very interesting choice that he made when he sent in his designs. It was just dry foreskin i'm pretty sure there was a uh, an oily brush in this process somewhere because those puppets were gelatinous mm -hmm. i mean they were just they applied the vaseline to the foreskin yeah gelatin base yes. for sure yeah one of the puppets one of the ghoulies absolutely appeared to have a foreskin as if um his head was a, a budding penis tip emerging from some foreskin sure you might want to cut that but no i'm keeping it fair enough that's anyway, you said it. That's Christopher <laughs> Biggs, who he was a big time part of the mechanics behind the puppets. So you know, you got this team of Bushler and Biggs, and they just cleaned house on on a puppet awesomeness. Now I, I may butcher this individual's last name, but anyway, I'm gonna give it a shot. John Vulich. He also appeared for such a gooey mechanical puppet extravaganza. He arrived upon the scene to contribute. 
So yeah, I'll get into some details starting with John Carl Buschler. He's got 40 horror movie makeup effect credits. I didn't really see it fit to share all of them, so I'll, I just picked my favorites. Starting with Mausoleum in 1983, Reanimator in 1985. He was definitely one of uh, Charles Band's guys as far mm-hmm. as you know, creating special effects and horror movie makeup goes. Bride of Reanimator in 90. The Garbage Pail Kid movie, which are we going to watch that in this uh, season? No, that, no. That's a gooey puppet movie, though. Yeah, but it's not a horror movie. Yeah, but it's a it's pretty awesome horrifying. movie. We'll save it for tapeworms, J.D. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, sweet. All right, Bushler had 67 special effects credits. So he's got 40 in the horror makeup and 67 in special effects, including Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2, From Beyond, Troll in 1986, which we'll be including in this season. Mm-hmm. Crawl Space also in 1986, and uh, Cellar Dweller in 1987. Oh, the Cellar Dweller. Yeah, Cellar Dwellers. Hell yeah. It's a cool name. You would think that Cellar Dwellers would get hella drunk off the wine that people tend to stash in their cellars. There were a lot of interesting wine colors in the Ghoulies, wouldn't you guys say? Yeah. Wine colors? You mean color. And it wasn't just for the wine. It was every drink except the pee. <laughs> yeah, there seemed to be a community urine that traveled around. That just got passed around, yeah. Mouth to mouth, but also... Pass to ass. Drink this urine in remembrance of me. There was clearly a cherry Kool-Aid that was passed off as wine. Yeah. And another potential Kool-Aid flavor, possibly like a... Purple Saurus Rex or a Newberry Blue, but that was also passed off as a wine color. Anyway, I'm going to talk about Christopher Biggs, a.k.a. Chris Biggs. 13 special effects credits, also involved with um, the movie Troll. A few of the Nightmare on Elm Street films and Friday the 13th, Jason Lives. There are 43 horror makeup credits for Biggs, starting with... Saturday the 14th of 1981. We've mentioned that a few times. Mausoleum, 1983. Teen Wolf of 1985. That's one of my personal favorites. Critters of 86 and Critters 2 of 88. We will most certainly discuss Critters in the next episode. I mean, we're talking a few Mm -hmm. of them. Yep. That's what you do when you're a horror podcast. Is it just me or were movies a lot more fun in the 80s? So fun. Some were, some weren't. I think it's because, like, if you're watching a movie deliberately, because there are so many movies from the 80s, like, tons and tons of movies got made. The ones that survived were probably... Were the good ones? You know, the more memorable. I just haven't had... I haven't felt that energy in any modern cinema. It's because you're dead inside. That and the Zucker Brothers kind of energy, you know? Like, oh yeah, I watch movies for fun. There's definitely a special energy in this brand of 80s horror. I mean, it's, you know, and and I love what they did with this film because I feel like they they recruited the most prominent gooey puppet makers of the time (laughs) in uh, the artist that I just named. I'm going to be a gooey puppet maker. And also there's John Volich. I believe that's how you pronounce it. That's who I mentioned before. He (laughs) was involved with the 1990 remake of the Night of the Living Dead. Then there was Anthony Allen Barlow, 18 um, pretty impressive special effects credits. I'm just going to kind of narrow it down to the ones I enjoy. Ghoulies 1 and 2, Cellar Dweller, Tremors from 1990, Total Recall. I know that's not horror, but sort of on that sci-fi cusp of horror moments and whatnot. 1990, RoboCop 2 again in 90. Yeah, that's about all I got. All right, I do want to, uh, real quickly, I do want to talk about Brian Connolly, Annie Stocking, and Yo. Craig Talmy. Do it. As they were in charge of the Ghoulies. I just wanted to put that out there before we move like on. They were the, the puppeteers for the Ghoulies? Yep. Okay. Right. They were the ones who were sort of, you know, in charge of the mechanical, you know, just right their m- movements. And, and then things. I mentioned that Richard Band did the score, but uh, he was aided by Shirley Walker. Texas Ranger. Joe, hell yeah. <laughs> And since we all know Dick Band, I wanted to talk about the fact that Shirley Walker wrote all of her film scores by hand. I'm wearing a Dick Band right now. It actually keeps blood in my penis and makes it appear erect. I would assume she wrote it with instruments, but it's cool <laughs> that she did it that way. That's the joke that you want to tell at the end of this, Joe? Apparently. That's what came out of my dumb mouth. Okay. Well, I'm glad that happened. So let's go ahead and move on to our personal experiences with the film. Yeah. 
uh, I'm gonna do shit crazy today, Chris. Let's just get you <laughs> so out of the way now, kick you so out. that we can move on. <laughs> and take that as a compliment because you always put, you know, your best foot forward. So you're technically a foot. <laughs> That's right, Chris. Tell us, tell, <laughs> fucking swear. Tell us your personal experience with the film. If I'm a foot, do I speak out of the ankle hole? You know what? I don't care as long as it's in front of the mic. <laughs> you speak by passing air through your toes. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like this movie was a little gooey, unfocused. Yeah. If this movie was made by a director who was like, oh man, this, this is so goofy. Like we're going to have so much fun with this. I feel like that would have been the much better movie. So you don't think they had a good time making this? I don't think they leaned into it enough. Yeah. Like, it felt like it wanted to be more lighthearted than it was allowed to be. Sure. Yeah. Right. I see what you're saying. And if this movie was just going nuts, it would be like, oh my god, this is like this is electrifying. That's why Gremlins works, because it's just completely off the rails. But they also, I feel like they had to step away from Gremlins and maybe take a slightly more serious tone. But it's Chris's turn, so go ahead, Chris. We'll just interrupt him. It's fine. He's not a person. He is a person, Joe. With feelings and emotions. Whenever the ghoulies showed up, it was always a good time. Hell yeah. Oh my god. If I was like, man, I didn't do much today. Ghoulie pops up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they bawled so hard. <laughs> and uh, they, I don't think they had a clear vision for the ghoulies. I don't think they understood, like, this is what this monster is, here's what it does, here's why it's dangerous. They would just throw it at people and let your imagination do the yeah. rest. And again, like, with the climax of the movie being these two old guys strangling each other while shoot shooting eye lightning. It sounds really metal. Trust me, it's not. It's all the execution. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that being the climax, it's like, I feel like there should have been some kind of struggle with the titular ghoulies like yeah they they kind of just when the final kind of climactic bit happened the ghoulies just kind of went eh, we're done i mean i think that the reason for that is that the ghoulies have their own agenda mm. that's great but that doesn't make it a better movie that's why when they were summoned by jonathan they agreed to do his bidding and as soon as Malcolm resurfaced, even though the summoning spell was cast with, mm -hmm. with Malcolm's ability. Jonathan's intent wasn't quite as evil as Malcolm's. Jonathan was just lost in, like, this new thing. But no, I, I think that they had their own agenda. And since nothing in the movie told us what the actual agenda was, we're left to decide on our own. So, Chris, real quick. Tell me what you think the agenda was. You get to decide. I think the agenda was to try to find the gooeyest, wettiest place that they could be and, like, hang out there. And it's a real pull. It's like trying to find your way home and you're lost. They really just can't relate to us and our dry world. It's not just fluid. It needs to be viscous. It needs to be gooey. Well, why wouldn't they just be fish if that were the case? Because they are devil worshippers. This is part of their eternity. You see, what they committed, <laughs> dry skin assassination. I can't. That's it. That's it. I, I try. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> All right, Joe, wh why don't you tell us about your personal experience with the film? Yeah, sure. Um, I saw this movie in the early 90s when I was pretty young. When, Hell yeah. You know, a lot of my generation was kind of watching the leftovers from the 80s, like Ghostbusters and this and, and Gremlins. Critters. And Critters, yeah. And I pretty clearly remembered the Ghoulies. Yeah. And as an adult, I nostalgically looked back on the Ghoulies and, and like, yeah, the, those wet puppets, they're really good. Yeah. They're a prominent um, force of gooey puppet horror. Absolutely. They are. <laughs> gooey puppet horror. But then re-watching the movie now... There wasn't as much ghoulie as I might have wanted. The ghoulie saturation was not there. The plot was, I don't want to say it was unfocused. It was just kind of obscure. Hmm. There was a lot of bullshit and it never really committed to the bullshit. Like the wacky group of friends could have been more fun if they had just let them be wacky stoner friends. Sure. So it, it felt like the movie was trying to do a lot of things that it didn't really accomplish. Right. But I had fun. It's a good cult classic horror movie. Absolutely. I wish it had more ghoulies. Same. Right. Um, I kind of want to kiss a ghoulie. <laughs> Which one, though? Um, Probably the, the little green one. And cuddle it and watch 
movies on Netflix with it. You want to Netflix and chill with a ghoulie? I do. Okay. One of the ghoulies did watch uh, Keith, John, Keith Drake, or something. whatever his name is. One of them was watching him it's read true. a book. So they, they will do stuff like that with you. Yeah, they'll just hang out. You know, they're not committed to this like Satan business. But they do always kind of like mm-hmm. cackle and gurgle themselves evilly. Sometimes they'll just pull mischief. Like they'll like bite your toes a little bit. Yeah. I think the ghoulies, you know, transcend the dark recesses of hell. I think they, you know, they're in it for their own amusement. They don't serve anyone, even though they are summoned by, you know, these satanic believers. They just... They're just doing their own thing. They're doing their own thing. They're committed to their own pleasure and pretty much to hell with everyone else. Right. My favorite ghoulie was definitely the little green one that was always because they didn't make it a lower half. So it was always like in coming out of toilet <laughs> and like in bowls yeah. of things. And isn't it fun that that like I think the tagline for ghoulies is they'll get you in the end and they're popping out of toilets. Uh, and they pop out of toilets right. and munch your butt. Yep. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Sure. Hey, JD, go ahead and uh, let's talk about your personal experience with the movie. Let's do that. I've been a, a pretty lifelong ghoulie fanatic and I am posturing toward watching Ghoulies 2 and Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. I'm interested in the uh, education of Ghoulies. I'm interested in knowing if they will have their student loans be forgivable or not. (laughs) I'm just kind of curious where they're at with that. Anyway, I could say for sure that I ate a, a Tombstone pizza while watching this with my grandmother, it was one of those movies we would rent from the video store along with a Nintendo game and possibly another horror film for the weekend. So, you know, it was just me, my grandma, and the ghoulies. And um, I would declare that my uh, need for gelatinous puppets was fulfilled in this film. Oh, yeah. And that's always really important to me. I tend to lean toward the the special effects, prosthetics, bladder effects, all of those types of things in films. And I I noticed them, and uh, that's what I'm here for. So, yeah. But yeah, this film is a little bit lost. But aren't we all? There are massive holes in the plot, and there are things that don't connect very well, but yet I still derived a great deal of pleasure from watching this film. Absolutely. Yeah, and shouting over it. Absolutely. We just exchanged uh, so much you know, Saliva. between the, the four of us. Yeah, I mean, were, we were oozing with our own <laughs> mucus materials. So yeah, my favorite ghoulie was the one that appeared to have, it was like almost like me as a little kid in the winter time, where like your nose runs and like sort of dangles above your upper lip. Uh... That puppet was phenomenal. And it, there was a cat ghoulie. There was also a mm-hmm. bat that was a bat one, yeah. With a nutsack. Yeah, I mean, his whole head appeared to be a, a very phallic symbol in a sense. No, no, go back and watch it. Like, it, it dangles from, like, the back of his wings. The back of his wings? Wouldn't that be a tail? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is not pointy. It is like, it looks like nuts. It's his nuts. All right. That's my favorite ghoulie because I like to imagine that what it does is it, it very gently flies over people and makes them and think bags like, them. Was I just teabagged? It slug marks their foreheads. That's how subtle it is, though. You're like, not people, sure. Like they have the suggestion yeah. of it, but then like, you touch your head and you're like, oh no. Well, I didn't see any flying ghoulies in this movie, so I'm I'm just assuming they're all like penguins, you know. I don't think they had the budget to make them fly around. That's true. Five point six million dollars. You're not flying anything. I mean, they they barely had the special effects know how to make it look like that guy was levitating like four inches. That's true. And I loved that they only showed his legs from the knee down <laughs> as he levitated. We need a crane for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So this some this, Chris Angel shit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like a David Blaine trick yeah. maybe did he levitate or is that just chris angel i don't know it sounds like something david blaine would do okay no, that's chris angel david blaine is actually a legitimate escape artist He's a houdini type yeah like i got them confused for the longest time but david blaine actually has talent yeah. and tricks and so on chris angel was a is a pretty big douche don't at me yeah i mean i don't know chris angel so i can't make that statement He's a stage magician that's just kind of a schmuck yeah all i know is is that i saw mm-hmm. Penn and teller live 
and Vegas many, many moons ago. Many moons! And they made fun of him a lot. As you should, because he's a schmuck. So Penn and Teller, they're not feeling Mr. Angel? No. No. I'm not entirely sure how many magic tricks that Chris Angel has performed as much as it is camera tricks. Right. And that's the thing, is that magic tricks aren't just about making the most, like, oh, this can't be done situation and then doing it. I listened to Penn and Teller talk about it. There's a, a thing called, like, the perfect trick, where if you make your magic trick so reality-defying, it robs it of the mystery because there's only one way it could have been done. So people don't look at it and go, how do they do that? They look at it and go, oh, it was a, it was a, it was it was a special effect, trick. right? So with all that said, let's segue into Kane's opinion of this film. Yeah. I absolutely adored this movie. So when I was a kid, my mom was a babysitter. So she babysat several of the kids in the neighborhood, that kind of thing, right? And one of the kids, I believe his name was Justin, he kept talking about this movie, right? Mm -hmm. Which we had. We had a copy of Ghoulies, right? And he kept talking about wanting to watch it. And I'm like, okay, fuck, we'll watch it. Fine, we'll watch it without saying fuck. I mean, I was a little kid, whatever. Right. So we watched the movie. He's like, that's not it. And then he describes the Goonies to me for the third <laughs> time. And I'm like, I've never seen that movie. What are you talking about? And then he brought that movie the next time he was at the house. Right. So I had a decent amount of experience with watching Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. You know, for me, it's it's not just a nostalgia trip. It's fun to look through the lens of a more experienced and more knowledgeable eye. Mm -hmm. Because you see things like special effects and, and you see things that when you were a kid, you didn't notice that part mm -hmm. of it. You know, you were just shitting your pants terrified because of the stuff that was happening, right? It, like, but before before you're aware of contact lenses, like, how did they get that guy's eyes Exactly, green? exactly. And it's magical exactly. and wonderful. You know, and it, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, watching it tonight was just a lot of fun. I had fun, too. Even with us screaming over it the whole time? <laughs> Even with you assholes just... Gaping over it? Just filling it up with just random <laughs> garbage, just... Instead of a trash compactor, you guys were the reverse of that. You were a trash <laughs> expeller, and it was just constant and unending, but I still had fun. I still had a good what time. What kind of trash were we expelling? With? I'm, I'm just guessing, but I'm going with uh, rot, rotten eggs and chewed up Twizzlers. Just whatever local landfill. Banana peels. No, no, no. Whatever local okay. landfill you, near, you live near. You know, All I have right. to go remove, I have to go remove some, some videotapes. Video From my trash compactor. Yeah, I have to go sure. remove some videotapes. Yeah, yeah. But no, I had a great time, and I'm glad we watched it. I'm excited for the rest of the Goopy Puppet episodes of this season. When we watch Ghoulies 2 and Ghoulies Go to College. We're not. Yeah, no. next week, Critters, if you want to watch that and follow along. And you probably should. It'd probably be Because otherwise idea. we will spoil it. And join us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> But yeah, so if you've watched Ghoulies at any point or you watched it recently or you're going to watch it now, let us know what you think. You know, we're happy to engage people. We do have a website. We give you brainworms.com. And you can also find us at most of the places that podcasts live. All true. Send us a message or a comment. Also, we warn you against forgetting to like, follow, and subscribe on YouTube. And click the bell. And clicking the bell. And speaking of remembering to do things, we would encourage you to go ahead and give a watch to Critters. It is a classic, gooey, gross, carnivorous puppet movie about aliens that turn into a giant ball and there's a whole bunch of good stuff in that movie but watch it and we will see you next week good night everybody good night i sat there for like an hour and this thing was like no fuck you did you say ghoulies yet